Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here on a Thursday. Uh, looks like April the 18th, 2024. In the place to be. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently, marvelous because I am. Let me get myself positioned here. Got some overcast skies this morning. Uh, the temperature, yeah, you can tell the temperature is, uh, there is is uh, getting a that summer feel, you know, it's kind of kind of warm, but I know that that can change at any time. A lot of our weather conditions are fluctuating out of control, and everybody's everybody's going around. This has never happened before. This has never happened before, but yet we keep calling it a, cri a climate crisis. Uh, sounds like a climate destruction to me. And so just, um, I just want to put this out. Please just do everything in your power to be honest with yourself and trust yourself and, and understand that something's happening that has been well, well, well past climate, a climate crisis. Okay. It's, I mean, it's well past that. We're in a destruction. Okay. And so we need to know the difference, you know, right? What's destruction? Well, first, let's see what a crisis is. What it means to be, to have a crisis. Let's see what it, what uh, defini definitions is given. Okay, it says um, a sudden change in the course of a disease, fever towards toward either improvement or deterioration. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Let me put in what it says about a weather crisis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I can spell. So it's, it's so important to know what you're speaking about and make sure it makes sense and that it's um, uh, clear and effective and it has proper meaning, right, to you so that you'll know how to perform. If you think, because we love to think that we have time for everything. It says a climate crisis is making many extreme weather events more frequent and more severe. Okay. I think that's uh there's a contradiction there. It says here a crisis means a turning means turning point or a condition of instability or danger. Okay. All right, cool. Now, what's what's weather destruction? It's, it's the meanings that we are giving these, some of these terms that are, are um, just not, do not represent what's actually happening. Is the weather severe or not? Is it deteriorating or not? So, so they say uh, extreme weather events like hurricanes, wildfire, floods, droughts, and they said they are threatening wildlife. These are just things I'm reading. You can't pay your way out of this. I'm just being really honest. Uh, in certain areas, I notice, you know, where I am, it completely repaved roads, which is a great thing. But now the roads are deteriorating again. Okay. Uh, let's look at something else. So my point is just challenge because these are beliefs that they, that that are being thrown out at us. Where they are, where you know, I guess they just don't want people to panic. But the damage has been done. You know, the the, the climate disaster is here. Someone has written that, said something about that. 
Um, so my point is, when does it become a destruction? When does it become, like they said, catastrophic weather events includes hurricanes, tornadoes, droughts? Is, is Are we experiencing that? Hurricanes, cyclones. So my point is just kind of um, be be gentle. Be, let, all right, let me just say this. Be honest, and sometimes you need to be forcefully honest with yourself, knowing that you are, you have your best interests at heart. Meaning, you're not going to take on this personally, but you're going to you. But you want the truth, right? And sometimes the truth hurts. So, be brutally honest with yourself, without the brutality towards your consciousness. Okay, does that make sense? Meaning, I think sometimes we are clouding our meanings of our words and do not recognize the energy that some of these words have. Some of these words have lost meaning, but yet they still can indoctrinate. They can still put you in a trance because you're not thinking about it. You're just allowing it to just kind of go and go and go and spin and spin. And so it's like you're accepting it. You're accepting, okay, it's just... It's just climate crisis it's not climate destruction not at all and see and that's what they want that's what they well whoever is concealing all of this information want you to know because they don't want you to panic and that's true i understand not wanting people to panic but wouldn't you want to know the truth so you know how to prepare yourself wouldn't you i would so i base a lot of things on the results you know, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? What am I smelling? How does a food, why does a food taste funny and leave ap- aftertaste in my mouth? Everything that I've eaten for, for a while has left an aftertaste, aftertaste in my mouth. Is that happening for everybody else? You know, so if you, if you really get down and dirty in, into things, it ought to snap you out of it and, and let you know that we are not in a crisis. We are in the events of destruction. Okay. Um, and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people also think that, okay, if I just hide, you know, hide on the ground, you know, hide in bunkers or just, you know, you know, you know, kind of push everything out then and then they want to want to uh believe that okay if if they can't see it then it doesn't exist you know they have all this so-called anointed power to know all of this okay cut it out (laughs) cut it out it's childish that's what you do in your fantasies you and when you're in your fantasies yeah you can believe anything and it's fun to be in a fantasy. I get in my fantasies too, but I know that they're fantasies. I know I need to work extra hard. If I want certain realities, I need to meditate properly, visualize properly, you know, manage and control my thoughts properly. If I want something to manifest itself, you know, there's no magic about manifesting, even though a lot of people attempt to do that. You know, they think there's magic involved. That all you need to do is be on your knees every day and, you know, and praying to somebody. You know, come on now. You know, who are you praying to when it's already within you? Who are you talking to when you are praying out, when you have everything in you that you need is there? You're part of the spirit. Okay, you're part of the creational energy. Who are you? Who else? You don't need anybody outside of you. Yes, you can get guidance from all of us. All of us can guide each other and help each other and still make a living to be able to provide for ourselves. You know, we're not going to be hoarding all, uh, you know, a lot of money and hoarding a lot of material things. You know, those of us that know what's going on. Other people that are in trances, you know, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Some people are already at a at a, at a a level of they're gone. And what does that mean? 
uh, in their mentality, in their mind, in their thinking, they're gone. They're in an abyss, and then you can't save them. That may be your family member, maybe somebody, your friends, associates, st- strangers. And so there's nothing you can really do about it. They're going to keep doing what they do as if they are on another planet. They are on another planet in their minds. So I don't know why people get upset when certain celebrities come through. You can tell they're having a psychosis and they start rambling off and saying offensive things and doing this and that and the other. And then we get and they get all upset about it, knowing, they, knowing these people are suffer, suffering from, from a psychosis. Nobody recognizes psychosis anymore. We get all offended and think everybody's talking about them and, oh, my God, they're anti semitic whatever. You know, I mean, enough is enough with all of that. And then people losing jobs because of their theories and opinions. Losing out on uh, uh, you know, providing for themselves and putting food in their mouth and putting food in the mouth of their children. We're so concerned about what people are saying, but what is what are these people doing? That's where you need to be focused on, on behaviors and actions, not what people are saying. People will say anything, but if they can't give you the results, then you need to move on and, and, and let them be because that's, that's what's going to happen. We're going to lose so many people into a mental psychosis, you know, a s- extreme psychosis where you can't reach them. But all you need to do is just protect yourself from them, you know, because some of them will become violent. And, and leave it leave it alone. You know, and trust yourself. Make sure you're standing on, on grounded, you know, you're grounded in your reality. And you, you know, because it makes, to me, when people start arguing with someone that they know, they ought to know have a severe mental psychosis or they're having a psychosis breakdown. And then we get all offended about what they're saying and what, that is, that comes with the territory. Anybody working with mentally ill people or people experiencing psychosis or whatever that is, you know, schizophrenic, uh, bipolar, all these labels that we're giving people, that's, that has to stop as well because then people start putting people in boxes and if they don't act the way they're supposed to do in these boxes, okay, well, point A says this, B, B, you know, we have these, these lineup of conditions of people. And if they're not acting like what you have lined up by people that don't know what they're talking about, you know, and then people start coming out of that box of that, then okay, okay, you know, people, you know, it's just insanity. It's insanity. So those of us that care, and I know I I know, I know there's plenty out there. We know what we're doing. We are showing we're, we're, we have compassion for people. It's not that I'm tolerating impro- and, um, inappropriate behavior. Hell no. That's not what I'm saying. I have compassion and empathy, but I'm going to protect myself and protect others. Okay? That's, that's protecting and serving people. All right? That, that's what that means. Okay? And that's what I said. People in law enforcement, a lot of the law enforcement mentality or culture does not actually understand people they yeah they're great at at the mechanics of their job the technical skills and but you know they treat you know i mean the same kind of compassion you give animals i mean you know what about human beings you ought to recognize when someone's having a psychosis it's about how their behavior and actions and, and, and they're not speaking, uh, they're inco- incoherent, you know, they're rambling, you know, they're not logical, rational, and reasonable. So why would you argue with that? You can do the best you can to, to kind of bring them down to reality, but that can be very dangerous, you know, and then calling them out, you know, bec- all because their ha- behavior, behavior was inappropriate. A lot of people come back with just as much inappropriate behavior to defend against it. And a lot of people say this, two wrongs don't make it right. 
Practice what we are preaching, please. Stop with the hypocrisy and the contradictions. Okay, and, you know, and just leave people. If we, you know, I understand a lot of people want to try to protect things. For, for, for Let me just say this. With the truth, the truth does not need defending. If you know the truth and you've gone through all the measures to understand what the truth is, it doesn't need your defending. So a lot of people are going to be experiencing psychosis forever and ever and ever. There's not a, no amount of medication that can necessarily get, get rid of it. You know, if we don't cap, you know, and the thing is a lot of people think that they, they are the ones to, to uh, prevent it. No, the individual is the one to prevent the series of events, the, the uh, cause and effect that will be affecting them. That's an individual job. Now, we can put out all the literature we want, all the guidance we want, all the help, but a lot of people are not, I don't know, I don't think they understand what it means to help people. Do you understand what it means to help people? Sometimes that means you need to leave them alone. When you recognize via your grounding yourself in reality that, okay, this person is unreachable, unteachable, but we'll just have the compassion for them. We'll monitor them, and we make sure that they do not cause harm to themselves and others. But you know, when someone has been called out for inappropriate behavior, okay, can we let it go? See, the problem with the social media platform, there's one event that happens one time. But it's pl played over a billion times, possibly in our heads, because we're watching it being filtered and, I mean, cycled and cycled and cycled and cycled. And we stay in that cycle and cycle and cycle with it, as if it, it is continuing to happen every day. Something happened a week ago, and we're, start, we're still acting as though it's still happening now. We've got to take back our realities and understand what is really going on so that we don't drive our own selves into psychosis where you'll be unreachable forever, okay? So I wanted to put that out based on some things that have been happening. Um, as I said, uh, you, know, there is, you know, there's a team of people that, you know, have set themselves up to where they may be lost forever in their delusion, illusionary thinking, this this sense of, you know, grandeur, this sense of, okay, okay, that, that happens, especially with people in cults, but it's more so about their thinking, is how they're thinking. And if it wasn't picked up in their adolescence and puberty by their parents or guardians, chances are it's, it's unreachable. They are unreachable. Okay? So practice what you preach. Okay? Uh, walk the talk. Know where you end and others begin. Know what you're responsible for versus what others are responsible for. You know, pay attention to you and ask yourself, okay, am I behaving appropriately right now? You know, how, what, am, what am I doing? What's my behaviors and actions? What's my environment like? You know, you know, does my shit stink? And chances are it does. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you wiping your ass properly? Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Turn off these social media platforms if you cannot discern the difference between when something happens once and it's being recycled and recycled and recycled. And it doesn't affect you every day. You know, it happened, like I said, a week ago, I and mean, you're still feeling the effects of it. It's over. It's done. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. I care, and I know a lot of you do care as well. We have to just continually monitor our thoughts, continually monitor our behaviors and actions, and just allow some people to be. Just allow them to be. All right, peace and love. And trust me, I'll be back. <laughs>